Let's paint a wonderful family of elephants in acrylic. Well, welcome to my studio. I'm so glad that you're here today. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can make your own version, and I'm going to take you step by step through the whole process. And I'd like to focus today on how to get started with the painting, how to um, pick the right reference, and then how to get that transferred onto whatever size canvas you're going to you're going to make or you could even do it on paper if you like and then I'm also going to show you um, how to do glazing you can really use any colors that you like in your painting of elephants so I'm using uh, primary yellow diorylide yellow pyrrol orange yellow ochre phthalo blue red shade ultramarine blue mars black and titanium white and I'm mixing all of the colors that are used for the entire painting from just those eight colors but really you can use any colors that you like and the next thing that you're going to need are brushes i'll get out my big brush trove here but uh, pick a, a variety of sizes so i've got a some large rounds some large flat brushes and you want to start with your largest brushes and then uh, slowly work down to these smaller brushes some soft round um, these are all these brushes are, that I'm using here are all synthetics um, But what you want to finish with is a little liner brush And that's what you can use to use your signature in any tiny little details But try and pick a variety of brushes in different sizes that'll help add some life and um, And also starting with big brushes um, gives a nice uh, feeling to the painting I'm painting on a 30 inch by 40 inch by inch and a half canvas um, and I'm also going to show you this this is a golden satin glazing liquid and when you add that to your paint uh, it thins the paint out and it makes it more transparent so you can do this layering effect and uh, in today's video I'm going to go through that with you and and show you how to use glazing medium it's a really wonderful thing so let's get started and elephants are really majestic and powerful and regal uh, creatures and they form these family units um, I feel like they have a lot of love and care for one another and they protect each other and so this painting I want to convey those feelings and get those across in my work and I'll show you what I did as I, I started and created and printed out I took some uh, reference photos from Pixabay and Pexels and then put that into Photoshop Premiere Elements and then printed it out. If you don't if you don't have all that, you can just basically start with a photo that you like. And then what you do then is you take a canvas and I've toned this with a fluid yellow ochre and let it dry and then um, divide the canvas so the grid method is the method that I like to use to get a painting started especially when it's something like these elephants where it's a very complex subject and you want to get it right so I'm using some blue painters tape here just so I can make four even shapes and then I'm gonna take a, um, a ruler and, and graphite and then uh, draw in and make a total of 16 shapes so these four I've got four squares you can see here are four rectangles and then now going to go in and make four out of each of those four more so we'll have four across and four down so you can see here like the top of the elephant's head I'm gonna make that shape in the same place right where that line is so that little pencil and then the his ear the daddy elephant on the side here gonna put that line right there and then that's a ways that I know I can draw and have to avoid doing a lot of erasures and I can get an accurate um, representation of where everything fits but the trick here is to make sure that the photo that you start with is the same proportions as the canvas that you're working with so you can see here the bottom of his foot and then for example the uh, female elephant the mother elephant i um, going to start to draw over it and get her into um, start and start to pick in and a little trick with this is look for your major uh, landmark so look where the two lines intersect and then um, Put those lines on there so you want to always keep your drawing as accurate as you can 
And if you do find that you mess up, then just erase and get back to the point where you know you've got a good start. Okay, so this mother elephant here, this female, I can see this line on her back, so I'm going to look on my canvas and see where that corresponds to, try and get the same angle. And then that uh, line over by her ear, the top of her head, I'm gonna look and see right on the paper, right on the photo, where everything lines up and then start to get her dimensions in so that it's accurate. I like to use graphite, a pencil. Um, you can use charcoal, you can use a, um, a contact crayon, whatever it is that you like to use. Um, some people use uh, chalk to do their initial drawings. Some people like to just start in right in with, um, with paint, but for me, on a complex subject like this, I like to take it real methodically and slow and start first with graphite. So I can see here the bottom of her leg. Gonna get that angle down there and her foot. And so you can kind of see by working with this grid system, it's a, it's a nice way to put the landmarks in and then you can continue and fill in your drawing as you're working and get it as accurate as you can. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a jet eraser and erase the extra lines that are the um, lines that are not part of the elephants, but are the, the lines to help me figure out where each of the different uh, rectangles sit. So I wanna try and get rid of some of these obvious lines here. They'll be covered up with paint, but if I can erase some of them ahead, it's up to you. Some people like to leave that, um, that bit of history there because it can become part of the painting. Uh, but it's just up to you to decide how much of the graphite you want showing. And take a soft, clean paintbrush, and um, you can take all of the extra uh, little crumbs from the eraser and get those out of the way. You want to be sure to do that step and get the extra little bits off, because um, otherwise they can get caught in your paint, and then you have some, you may have some unwanted texture. They'll get um, embalmed and the <laughs> your um, eraser crumbs might get embalmed uh, within your paint or mixed in there. And so you wanna get all of that extra graphite and eraser up off the canvas. Okay, so next step now. Now is uh, we're gonna go in and add our colors. So um, we've got uh, phthalo blue red shade and then ultramarine blue you can use either phthalo blue red shade or ultramarine blue. And um, I've got that mixed in here with yellow ochre to mix up. Uh, there's just the yellow ochre and then now with a little bit of the phthalo blue red shade and a lot of it. Um, when you add this in, we're going to make a monochromatic, um, a monochromatic kind of little puddles of paint. And so we can lay in the lights and the darks of the subject. So I'm choosing to use the yellow ochre mixed with blue. Uh, yellow ochre is a wonderful neutral and adding the blue in, you really can use uh, whatever color you like. If you wanted to use, uh, for example, um, uh, yellow ochre and purple or yellow ochre and red, you could start with a red underpainting and add blue, just really kind of any contrasting color. You could, you, could, uh, you could do it with just black and white, if you like, and make different shades of gray. It depends uh, what your goals are uh, for your painting. I personally really like the warm color uh, that a, yellow, a wash of yellow ochre puts over the canvas. I love that warm glow, and I like letting bits of that glow show through so um, it just depends with on your elephants how much of that you want to allow and let it come through and these initial dark marks um, what i'm looking at is i'm taking a look at the photo the reference photo and then just putting on the elephants using the graphite drawing the pencil drawing as the um, as a way of telling what's what but i'm starting out with the dark so just putting in the very darkest things that I can see um, and putting those into the painting so we can get our dark areas established. So now that we've laid in our very darkest color, let's go to 
um, start to add in some of the next darkest color. So that would be the um, phthalo blue red shade mixed with more of the yellow ochre and getting kind of the next middle color going. And everywhere that I'm seeing kind of this middle color, I'm going to go ahead and put that in on the painting. And as you're working on your painting, just paint along with me. And um, and you can do as much or as little of this process as if, if you like. If you want to skip this part and go directly to color, you can. But I'll just say that I feel like for myself, um, doing this in between where we create this middle version um, we can the advantages of that we can get this uh, you know nice layered effect with the colors when they show through and also by doing this um, this uh, this set of putting in the lights the middles of the dark getting this underpainting here gives a person confidence when you go to the colors that you can kind of boldly place your colors because you already will have put below that um, the, where the light middles and darks go. All right, so at the very bottom of the feet of the elephant where they touch the ground, I'm gonna do a thing and it's literally called grounding. You make, wanna make sure you put your very darkest color at the bottom um, underneath where all, you know, everywhere where they actually touch the ground. Now it is tempting to want to put color in right away, but I find that if I'm if I get disciplined and and go ahead and, and do a full color underpainting, that um, that I'll usually get a much better result. So I'm I'm gonna follow the process here and do a this full color or this uh, full tonal underpainting. And we've got the dad elephant and then the. Um, the baby elephant next to the dad got those pretty much done and ready to go and then we can work here on the on the female on the mother elephant and on the little baby that's uh, that's near her also when I'm putting this color in I'm also trying to think about the anatomy of the elephant and the way the skin is sitting on their body trying to work a little bit with uh, the contours so when I put the paint on even at these bottom layers I'll go ahead and follow the curves and follow the form of the leg here just knowing that that a lot of times these these shapes will show on the top layers so by getting the contours right it helps create a sense of three-dimensionality and down and getting this idea that her foot is up as she's walking now a little bit on the body using this uh, the, this middle dark color We'll get some more color here and I keep looking up at the reference photo and then periodically if you're working on a smaller canvas um, you know it'll be just kind of right in front of you but on these bigger canvases it's it's good to periodically stand back a little bit and then check check how everything's looking and sometimes it might feel weird to put a certain color in there it feels like like oh I don't know if I you know but just trust your eye and look if you see a dark area put the dark paint in um, there's a saying in painting that says you know like paint paint what you see not what you know and so meaning um, that sometimes what's in our brain might fool us a little bit and so if you paint actually what you're seeing the darks and the lights and the different shapes it will actually look more realistic than if you paint what you think it should look like <laughs> if that makes any sense all right, and then now a little bit uh, lighter color up here on the top of that baby elephant. There we go. So now coming in with the with the yellow ochre that's mixed in with just the tiniest amount of phthalo blue red shade. So so getting in between these middle colors and then the middle light colors, we can start to create a sense of volume and form within this elephant family. And then whenever possible. Um, think about creating an angle so at the top of his ear there it's like look to see where you see straight lines uh, curved forms often look better if you think of them as um, like a circle if you think of a circle a little bit like a stop sign like a octagon um, sometimes uh, painting things like that painting circular things is harder to do than painting straight things 
So sometimes if you break it down into the areas that are angles or um, what's straight and, uh, and where there's a crook in it, sometimes also is helpful. Now I'm using here a round Taclon, um, a golden Taclon brush with a long handle and uh, periodically then dipping also dipping into water, just plain water so that the paint will flow. You also can uh, dip your paint a little bit into uh, glazing medium, but the worry with that is it won't, uh, if you do it too soon, um, then you don't get it necessarily as much paint coverage as, as you might want. And then it also, uh, the glazing medium will extend the drying time. So I usually avoid doing the glazing until I get to the top color layers. And we'll get into that here in a little bit. So when you're working on your elephant portrait, um, you might find that you want to do just a small elephant portrait like an 8x10 or a 12x16 or 16, even 16x20. 16 you don't have to go as large of a painting as I'm doing here. Uh, this painting is a commission painting of, a, of an elephant family um, on this 30x40 canvas. That's why I'm using this particular size. And um, I, a lot of times, will do Daobism technique on top. Um, this is not going to be Dao, uh, have any texture on top. It's going to be just a smooth painting um, when it's all done. So I'm going to go ahead and try and get as much detail and a sense of movement uh, through the brushwork as I can. So I'm going to try and think about um, letting the brush uh, give a sense of. Uh, I guess uh, letting the brush give a sense of um, of movement and of energy through like some energetic brush strokes. I think this is just kind of a process of just continuing on until you feel like you're ready to do the um, the top level or the top top layer of paint over the top. I still feel like uh, there's some details that I want to get in here. I want to get their tusks in. So these are African elephants and. African elephants, both the male and the female, have tusks. So her tusks happen to be pointing in and his happen to be flaring out. So I've got, I um, want to show, show that, that tusk as well into the painting. Get some darks in here to show the side of the face. And the side where the area where the tusk meets up, uh, the origin of the tusk, it actually goes up really high up near their eyes. So I want to kind of try and capture that feeling of volume in the paint. And then um, back behind her legs, we can't see all of her legs um, from the front here. So we just just going to paint just what we can see. And a little bit, they have a complicated head. The adults, the um, babies have got a softer uh, um, look, kind of a more rounded head, but the adults really have a lot of, uh, they have kind of a bony structure on their head and, um, and then on the female elephant a little bit of her spine shows through from the front, so we want to capture that as well. Okay, now let's start to get some color here. Let's uh, take some of the titanium white and the first thing I want to do is um, do the lightest thing in the painting, which in this case is going to be the sky. So taking a tiny amount of the primary yellow, mixing that with a painting knife. Or I guess technically a palette, there's a palette knife because it has a little hook in it. Um, so we can mix that, add a little bit of what I call sunshine in a can, the diarylide yellow. Mix a little bit of that. Add a little bit, got a little bit too bright. Let's add in a little bit more of the white. And now let's add a small amount of the phthalo blue red shade and make a really nice sky color. The top of the sky. So the bottom of the sky near the horizon is going to feel warm and light. And then as we move up in the sky, it's going to get cooler and get darker. So if you go outside and look at your sky, um, it's, it starts out like near your horizon. It starts out with the lightest colors. And if you 
um, tip your head back and look kind of straight up. The sky is, is kind of more of a really dark, special dark blue. Let's get a little test of that on the canvas. That looks nice. We'll try out that light color over by the horizon. Yeah, that's gonna look good. So I'm looking to make sure we've got enough contrast in our colors. And now let's add in, let's make a color for the top of the sky. So let's go to the ultramarine blue or this French ultramarine blue. It has more purple in it. Um, so, so it's darker and it's more purple as we, or cooler in color. And let's test that out here up at the top. Let's see how that looks. So oh, yeah, very nice. So we've got a, kind of our three basic colors for the sky. All right, so I'm just gonna dip my brush here in a little bucket of just plain water and, and now go in and take the colors that we just mixed and start out with that lightest color over by the horizon. And the reason I wanna start with again with the sky first is because since the sky is gonna be the lightest thing in our painting, that will help set um, and help make decisions later for like for example the ground will be darker in color and we're gonna let a lot of the yellow ochre from the underpainting let a lot of that show through so I'm just holding the brush kind of farther back so I do gonna not try and grab it near the bristles gonna hold it on the handle a little bit further back and just let the brush kind of just uh, kind of do a wispy cloud-like movements on the canvas. And when you're working on your sky uh, for your painting, um, then you can decide to how much of the underpainting you wanna let show through. So I happen to like when a lot of it shows through. I feel like that adds kind of a nice glow. So I'm making sure to not completely cover that underpainting. I wanna let, let that show through. And so what we're doing here is what's called negative painting, which means that we're taking the color and we're carving out the painting by painting around the subject. So we're putting the sky around the subject that we have. Now let's go in with that lighter color that we have and allow some of that to mix over the top of the color we just put on so they'll blend nicely. And this is just a flat, um, wash brush looks like I think that's like an inch and a half wide brush you can use an even bigger brush if you like caution to not use too small of a brush when you put your sky in because you want your strokes to show we want want to be able to put the colors in and let everything show as we're working and just work up along her top of her head and her body. Reload the brush and just nice and gently get it in. Now I'm going to also leave a little bit of area. I can come back in later with a brush and and um, you know get as so I'm letting some of it brush up next to the animal but um, the different animals but not let's not uh, I don't want to completely get it up to the edge so I'm going to leave a little bit of room and then can come back later with a brush and um, and then fill in any gaps if we need to so leaving a little bit of wiggle room all right so getting that color and then up at the very top is when we're going to put our darkest blue there we go with our darker blue And I want to just fill in a little bit. I think we need to get a little more coverage here with the light. All right, now with the darkest, that's the ultramarine blue mixed with a little bit of white. We'll get that up for the very top of our sky. And just allowing that paint to just kind of go in in different directions. We'll get the top of the top of the sky going and dip into the water when we dip into that little bucket of water then that made, makes the paint flow a little better makes it uh, a little softer 
Okay, and then going back in with the medium blue and then the dark blue. There we go, just kind of letting these colors mix a little bit and knowing that within a sky, oftentimes you have different colors of blue and this kind of gives a feeling of maybe some clouds, some atmosphere, but just leaving it kind of loose and brushy. There we go. Now we've got our sky started. Now the moment of truth. Let's get some elephant colors going here. So using some of the ultramarine blue and titanium white and a little bit of the orange can make up some wonderful gray colors. And then also adding a little bit of the yellow ochre and some black. So all of those colors were made with just the white, the ultramarine blue, black, and the yellow ochre and orange and just different mixtures. And then all of those colors are then gonna be the ones that we'll use to describe the elephants. So just starting out with one of the medium colors and also following the contours of the elephant's body. I'm gonna lay in and take, and looking at the photo, my photo reference, I'm gonna pick the areas where the color is the lightest on the, on the animals. And then putting those colors, now at first it looks a little bit odd because we've got, you know, this yellow, the sea of yellow ochre here. But as we're working on it then, and we get the colors put in, then it will start to make more sense. But just laying in first these lighter colors and I'm putting it where we have the lighter colors of the underpainting. So here's where the underpainting really comes um, to an advantage is you can uh, kind of confidently put your color on because you already know ahead where your lights and your mediums and your dark colors are because you've already put them in with your underpainting. Then laying in these lighter colors on the mother elephant, on her ears, And you might also notice too that, um, so the photo reference that I had, I had th these four different elephants that I all brought together on, in Photoshop on my, on my elephant family. And these elephants, sometimes you'll have different colors on the elephants. And sometimes they've been rubbing themselves in the mud and taking mud baths. But um, for my finished elephants, I'm aiming to make them all a pretty similar color. And I'm also aiming to make them colorful, uh, more vibrant, for example, than necessarily what they might look like in nature. I'm thinking about using color in an emotional way. So, um, so when you're painting your elephants, you can decide just how colorful or not colorful you want them to be. Um, I like using a lot of oranges and blues and purple in the grays um, and kind of pushing the color as far as I can. Um, but if you want to uh, be more, call it more photorealistic or more, um, you know, say true to the color, um, then you can choose to use color in a less emotional way and, and then just stay within a tighter range of, of grays, of soft grays and dark grays. But I like the idea of introducing blues and greens and different colors within their bodies to convey this idea so so again i think that's just a personal choice and you know you can of course do do them however that you like yours But getting these initial uh, light colors on, it's uh, it feels exciting to get these into your painting. Um, once that sky is in, it kind of sets the sets the tone of where the painting is going to go. 
Um, so again, I want to keep that sky as light as I can um, so that the elephants will look, will have a lot of contrast with that. And then stepping back periodically to just check the colors and make sure everything is looking correct. All right, so this middle gray color that was mixed with um, the French ultramarine and a little bit of the orange, the pyrrole orange and titanium white, this color here will, will get, uh, get this onto the the male elephant and you can see the strokes of color that I'm putting in here I am trying not to have too many rounded shapes I'm thinking about the strength of the elephant and the boldness of the elephant and how powerful they are so I'm gonna put on these these um, strokes of color in a bold way so that I'm thinking about the elephants I'm, I'm trying to convey with my brush strokes um, the power that they have and the strength that they have. So dipping into that darkest color, let's restate some of the dark. And along here, going over the top of the initial underpainting with this new dark color. I like to just do one stroke and then come back over to, to again try and emphasize that strength or that strong feeling. Now going in with a, a flat, uh, <clears throat> now going in with a flat wash brush, let's go in and establish some kind of these lighter colors here. But I like the idea that these brush strokes are showing. So uh, let's dip into the water and that will soften, soften the, um, the paint effect. Let's go in and mix these two grays together and get some effects across on the female elephant on her trunk. And again, following the anatomy of her head and of her trunk. top of her back leg and her body, her torso. And we'll get a little bit of that color. Let's get that up over here as well on the baby elephant, on baby elephant's ear, following the direction of the growth of the ear. layering process is uh, for me a lot of fun I, after these initial colors are laid on you can lay as many additional colors as you want over the top and by adding these other layers it um, you can get increasingly different levels of uh, realism or you can get increasingly um, different levels of um, abstraction depending on where you're wanting to go with your your elephant that you're doing your elephant family um, I'm choosing to um, put some scribbling kind of motion and some brushiness in there to try and um, again show that energy that the family of elephants has and then trying to stay again with the contours of the elephants bodies Always double checking with the photo reference. And then just letting those layers come together. And elephants have just got tiny, tiny little eyes. So they've got a lot of wrinkles around the eyes. So I'm going to try and um, explore that in paint here. We'll get the top of the ears, the way they connect with the head. 
They have these big floppy ears. Powerful ears. You can see that I need to... I made that initial shape around the eye a little too light so I can correct that now with a little darker shape down the side. There we go. And standing back and just double checking. Then a uh, layering process here between these lights and these darks. I want to make sure I don't completely cover up the underpainting, but try and get some marks on here that are going to work with the underpainting. And get that dark. We'll do a wet over wet here. And kind of get that blended. There we go. I'm on the same side here. Want to make sure to not lose the dark areas. Preserve the dark areas and preserve the light areas. And up close here, let's get a little bit more of the dark in here and get that softly blending. I want to try and leave um, some areas um, with a jagged edge and some areas more blended. I feel like that adds a little bit more dynamic to the painting. So as we're working on it, we can make it um, more and more refined. You can decide on your own work um, how, I guess, how jagged or how bold you want it to look, how abstracted you want it to look, or, um, you know, like how many soft edges you want versus how many hard edges. So now it's important to get the light areas. So the light areas, for example, on the trunk, um, where the light is hitting. I'm going to try and capture that here by mixing some light in there and get some middle tone. Down at the bottom of the um, male elephant, um, bottom of his trunk, it's quite dark, but up at the top here where the light is hitting it, it's pretty light, so I want to capture that and also capture the round effect and then also the wrinkled effect. So we've got quite a few things going on here. We've got roundedness, we've got wrinkles, and then we've got a sense of motion um, as he's marching along with his family. Um, the trunk is moving. And all of the, the wrinkles on the trunk and the wrinkles on their bodies, um, they all follow a little different pattern. They aren't it isn't completely symmetrical. It's got um, some some areas where it's it's uh, it's coming in more than others. We'll get some highlight areas here on the side of the trunk where the light is hitting. Now, when you're working on your own, uh, when you're working on your own, own uh, elephant painting, you know don't feel afraid to be bold with your color choices, and don't feel afraid to be to be bold with where you put your lights and your darks. It's your painting and ultimately it's your expression of what you're feeling. So uh, so you want it to, you know, be as bold or as, as gentle as you want it to be. So I'm making this uh, painting as part of the Valentine Art Challenge that I'm um, hosting out here on my YouTube channel. Uh, and. Um, and I hope that you get a chance to participate in. And you might wonder, how does this possibly, how does this elephant family possibly fit in with the idea of Valentine? Well, it's a, the challenge is um, to create artwork which represents love or represents the idea of, of Valentine. And in my mind, the idea of an elephant family that's traveling together and, and loves each other and supports each other, that's to me the idea of um of love kind of like from the bible um for god so loved the world that he gave his only son who that whosoever believes in him should should not perish but have eternal life uh john three sixteen. so the um this idea that the elephant family protects its its young and they have their little family group it's uh to me that's a just a wonderful expression of love and of valentine and of um family knit. so when putting these other colors here you might you might notice this like you know trying to get some um, blue grays and some brown grays and 
light grays, dark grays, dark blues, trying to get a whole variety of colors to describe the elephant. And as I'm putting a, a, a color down, I'm trying to compare it with the others that are already on the canvas and to see um, when we're changing planes, so in other words, an angle. When the angle changes, I'm thinking about, do I need to c change the color temperature or the value of the, the color that's already there? Now, working a little bit over here on, on the side of his uh, body right um, and the back, where the back leg meets up with the torso. Okay, so now some more fun here. Here is a filbert brush. So this is, you'll notice it's got a rounded edge. It's a flat brush, like a wash brush, but it has a little bit of a rounded edge. And so um, what I wanna do now is uh, go in and these tusks, these yellow tusks, gonna go in and put in and create a, uh, a white tusk. So we're gonna let a little bit of the yellow ochre show through, but this is the um, highlight area of the tusk. So let's get that laid in. And then what we can do next is use that same filbert brush and lay in and um, soften that edge. So let's wipe off on paper towel, wipe the extra white off. And now go in and soften that edge so that the highlight in the center of the highlight in the center of the tusk, of the ivory tusk, is um, is blended. All right, so up close here, just gonna feather that edge and put a little bit of pressure on the side of the of the brush, and just tease the edge along create the highlight effect on the top of the on that top of that um, on the top of the tusk and just take that brush and give it a little wiggle all along the side to to make that paint edge so it's not a hard edge. We want to have a, just a, 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 a just a soft edge coming off and blending in with the rest of the sides of the tusk. So we're trying to get a three-dimensional look to the tusk with the center highlight. All right, now let's work on a little bit of grass. So that's that same phthalo blue red shade um, taking the wide round brush and just kind of using a calligraphy kind of a feeling, just a loose and calligraphic shape. Let's create some areas that are right underneath where the animals are walking. And that um, this color here is a, the mix of phthalo blue, red shade, and yellow ochre. That was that same original color that we were using um, as the darkest dark. It's funny when you get it next to the other colors on the canvas, it has more of a blue green look instead of just a dark blue look. This color is all relative to what you place it next to. And a couple little marks over here next to the elephant's trunks. There we go. Now the fun part. Let's get out our satin glazing liquid. So this, the one I'm using here is from Golden. Um, what it does is it slows down the drying and you can create um, like as transparent as you want. You can do layer after layer after layer on top of this. So we've got our basic colors of everything going, but when we put more paint on top, what we're trying to do now next is to create some soft effects. So. We'll get a little bit of this, um, let's get a little bit of this squirted onto the palette. And it comes out as, um, it will dry uh, kind of in a, like a satin kind of a finish. So it will not dry as opaque as this is. So this looks like it's white, but it actually will dry uh, kind of clear. So what you do is you just take a, a, a palette knife 
and mix that in. Just mix it into the colors that you already have, and it makes a soupy, it makes a soupy thin consistency. All right, so just take a paintbrush into that new area, but you can see how thin that is. It makes it kind of thin, and um, when we lay this on top, it will look a little bit more opaque and it dries more clear. So you can see there when I'm just running it across, it makes a thin version, or it's a it's a way to make like a very thin layer. Um, and it's instead of using water, because if you use water, it does not have the same effect as this glazing liquid does. This glazing liquid is just a really nice way to lay uh, shapes of color on your painting and it will dry leaving uh, kind of it creates these neat three-dimensional effects when it uh, lays on top of the colors that you've already put on in a wonderful layered kind of idea so here on the baby elephant I can make a nice transition between the dark and the light areas by using that glazing medium over the top just anywhere I want to soften a transition I can add another color with just this glaze on top over here with the mother elephant and you can lay this on as, as thinly or as thickly as you like and what's nice is it will dry sometimes if you add too much water to if you add too much water to just regular acrylic paint it will not be archival as it as it is this glazing medium you can have just a small amount of pigment and it will stay archival meaning it will um, it will stay in place and not have any problem so these elephants if you look at them they've got this you know very wrinkly skin so I want to try and use the glazing medium to create this feeling of of, um, of layers and of uh, the wrinkles we can add a little glazing medium to the black to create the center of the eye there we go We'll get a little eye on the baby, just using a small round brush and just one mark. I made that eye a little bit, I made the eye, his left eye, the one that we're seeing from the right hand side, I made it a little bit too big so I can come back later um, with a brush and adjust the shape and adjust the size of that and, and uh, make it look correct. Over on the mother, we'll get her eye there. Now let's come in with that same round brush and a, and a little bit of water added to the brush. Come into the, the, the just the little puddle of titanium white. Now I'm going to attempt to put in high um, eye highlights, but the highlight, a person has to be really careful with that. You don't want it to be too big. So I'm going to guess that my highlight, my eye highlight, is going to be on the large side and I'll need to go back and adjust it. But at least we can get something in. We can always come back with a brush and make it smaller. So these eye highlights right now as they stand are too large. So let's go in and adjust it, uh, rinsing off the brush. And that, there we go, just take a little bit away. Let's transfer it to this other side. Yeah, there we go. Just looking to make the eye um, appear as though it's got a little glisten to it or that it's round. Just going in, there we go. And now on this baby, his eyelet highlight is way too big. We'll brush some of that back. And same thing with mom elephant. Let's take some of that down. There we go. Because again, these elephants just have tiny, tiny little eyes. All right, so we're getting really close here. It's time to sign the painting. So I'll show you how to do that. You're gonna take your, uh, I like to use um, the black. I like to use uh, Mars Black. I'm gonna mix that with a small amount of water. You can also use glazing medium, but I'm using a small amount of water. And then we'll go in and sign my name. So we'll get a little bit 
onto the brush using a liner brush, which is, uh, it has a long set of bristles, really nice for signing. And get the, and then go back, just do a stroke and then reload the paintbrush. I sign with my first initial and full last name. Of course you can sign, you know, however you like. I guess the key is to always try and use your signature the same way each time. Here we go. All right, we've got a signature and we've got a painting. Well, I hope that you had fun today. I had a lot of fun painting with you, and I hope that you give uh, these elephants a try. And let me know if you do. Let me know uh, in the comments, and uh, let me know how yours came out. So I, I hope to see you again, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and, and uh, come back and see me again soon. So until next time, it's Dina Tollefson, and all my best to you. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, my art club members. I appreciate you.